And, and it, it actually makes sense from, from an evolutionary perspective. I mean, first of all, we are tribal primates, right? And, and our optimal group size seems to be something like 250. We can keep track of about that many social relationships. And that's, that's also... also Dunbar's high. number. That's right, exactly. Yeah. And that's correlated with brain size, right? Yeah. So, all right. And so you might say, well, why that size? And then you might say, well, a hierarchy has to be optimized for two functions. And one is, well, you want to be able to climb the damn thing. So if it's really, really big, the probability that you're going to climb it is really low. And if it's too small, well, who cares if you climb it? Oh, so you want it, yeah, you want it somewhere that that's big enough to climb and and powerful enough to make the climb worthwhile. And so, and so there's some optimization there. Now, so you might think of everything within that hierarchy as explored territory, and the reason for that is that explored territory is where, when you do something you get what you want so so think about the conditions under which the limits of your knowledge manifest themselves i mean there's all sorts of things you don't know a mil, you know a trillion things but you're not sitting there like torturing yourself to death because there's a trillion things you don't know but then if you go out in the world and you act something out and the outcome isn't what you desired then that registers an error so let's say you're at a party and you tell a joke and no one laughs well the party, th see, think about what happens to the space around the party. When you tell the joke, the second before you tell the joke, you're in one place. And the second after you tell the joke, when there's an awkward silence and everybody is looking embarrassed, you are no longer in the same place. You've stepped outside the protective um, embrace of, of that particular hierarchy, and you've made yourself an alien. And the, th the thing that people use to process the alien is the, de is the snake detector, the serpent detector, the dragon detector. And it's always been that way because anything that's outside the hierarchy is a threat. Any stranger, any strange idea, any, any, any animal manifestation, any noise, any spirit, it's, and it, it's, a, it's a threat to the integrity of the dominance hierarchy and in many, many ways. So, for example, it's deeply rooted because that was your question. What's the evolutionary basis? There was a great paper published in a journal called PLOS1, P-L-O-S-1, about five or six years ago looking at something absolutely terrifying in my estimation, which was there's this, there's this idea that part of what motivates the authoritarian end of political conservatism, so let's say the right-wing fascist end, is associated not with fear but with disgust. Disgust is an entirely different emotion. And so these researchers did this fascinating study where they went to a number of different countries and also looked at states within the same country, looking at the relationship between the prevalence of infectious disease and authoritarian attitudes at the individual level. The higher the infectious disease rate, the more authoritarian the political views. And, and the correlation was really high. It wasn't like 0.1. It was 0.7. It's one of the highest correlations between two phenomena I've ever seen in the social sciences. And you might say, well, why? Well, here's one reason. I said that the strange idea and the stranger and the pathogen, let's say, are all the same thing. Well, it's all because they're external threats to the structure of the dominance hierarchy. You know, when, they, when the Spaniards came to the New World, 95% of the natives died. They died from smallpox, they died from measles, they died from mumps, they died from chickenpox. Because you don't know what the hell is coming at you when you let something new inside the dominance hierarchy. Whether it's an idea or a disease, you know, words are a virus. I think that was Laurie, no, that was uh, what's the, that heroin addict author. Burroughs? Burroughs, yeah, that was his phrase. Laurie Anderson made a nice video about that. Words are a virus. And so we respond to them with the same circuitry that we use to detect pathogens. And I'll tell you something even more frightening when we were working this out, because it's associated with this trait called orderliness, which is actually a good predictor of, of right-wing political belief. I went back and looked at Hitler's Table Talk. It's a book, Hitler's Table Talk, and he wrote that... Be it, it was derived from notes that were taken by his secretaries between 1939 and 1942 when he was eating dinner and spontaneously expounding on the structure of reality. Um, he was very open, Hitler, very creative person, but also extremely orderly. Um, and I looked at the metaphors that he was using to describe the Jews and the gypsies and all the other people that he burned and, and destroyed, and it was all pathogen. It's all pathogen metaphor. The Aryan race is a body, it's a pure body, the blood is pure, the Jews are rats or insects or, 
or lice or disease, and so are the gypsies and everyone else, and they need to be eradicated and burned out, essentially. And here's something even more frightening. So when, when, Hitler, when Hitler first took over Germany, he was kind of a public health freak, and he also washed his hands a lot every day, and he was also a worshipper of willpower, so he was a really orderly guy. And uh, he started this public health campaign in Germany, and he put together these vans that would go around, like, screening people for tuberculosis, which, you know, was a perfectly fine idea. But then they started a beautification program of the factories, because he didn't like how messy the factories were in Germany. So he had people clean them up, you know, sweep them out and plant flowers out front and, and fumigate them with, for rats and insects, right? Parasites. Oh, and the Jews were always compared to rats and insects as well. They used Zyklon B to do the insecticide. Well, Zyklon B, that was the dr gas that was used in the, in the death camps. So it went like pathogen, insect, rats, and then it went into the uh, asylums, you know, so, so that people who were mentally deficient, they were like parasites and rats, and then it was Jews and gypsies and parasites and rats.